Hello and welcome to today's February 3rd daily news report as well as ongoing stimulus package information video. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. On this channel, I keep you in the loop on what's really going on in Washington, D.C. with President Biden, the Build Back Better stimulus package, the U.S. economy, money, investing, and much, much more. All right, don't forget to enter your name to be one of the winners of the February giveaway that Casey and I are doing, thanks to amazing video sponsors, and I'll make sure to leave a link down below. And thank you guys so much for giving these videos a like. I really, really appreciate it, and I just love bringing you guys the news. Okay, some good news. The Canadian government said yesterday that they are open to speaking with truckers and removing some of the mandates if the truckers will unblock the U.S.-Canada border entry so that goods can continue to flow from Canada to the United States. Right now, there are over 150 meat trucks backed up at the border trying to get meat to the United States before it goes bad. The truckers said they are open to this and don't want to mess up the supply chain issue further, but they went from being heroes to zeros, and they're sick of being treated by second-class citizens by Trudeau. Yesterday, where is Trudeau was trending on social media companies, but don't worry, they worked quickly to get that taken down. Trudeau has been in hiding since this all began, but swears it's COVID-related and not because he's afraid of his own citizens. Can you imagine if that guy was the commander-in-chief if we ended up in a war with uh, Canada? <laughs> All right, now I share this uh, with you because this is hot news and it's kind of been interesting to watch, but truthfully, I'm hoping that there's resolution on the border quickly because I don't want this to lead to higher prices at the grocery store for my YouTube viewers. In other good news, uh, Medicare will now... Uh, uh, allow you to get home testing COVID tests for free starting this spring. That way, uh, Medicare covers the costs so that you aren't having to shell out twenty to sixty dollars every time you think you need to test for COVID nineteen. Also, private insurance companies have been ordered by the White House to provide up to eight home tests for free each year. Facebook stock dropped by twenty three percent. Last night, as it was revealed, Facebook has lost millions of followers and hundreds of thousands of old followers are no longer logging in on a daily basis. This is very bad for Facebook uh, and it, it reflected in the stock. So the investors got spooked and bailed in massive numbers. The value of Facebook dropped by $200 billion in just about one hour Bad, bad, bad. All right, yesterday I told you how Jeff Zucker, head of CNN, stepped down. Well, it's come out that Chris Cuomo and his legal team threatened to expose all the dirty secrets at CNN, starting with the inappropriate and undisclosed relationship of Mr. Zucker. It sounds like there are a lot more dirty secrets at CNN that they are hoping stay in Chris Cuomo's bag of blackmail tricks. Think of what this guy knows and how he could use it to not only financially destroy CNN, but also to enrich himself and his family at this point. The IRS has announced a partnership with ID.me to force people to use images of their own face when doing their taxes. The IRS says these biometric passwords will make accessing uh, private tax information easier than ever. However, let's get real. The IRS wants to spy on your bank accounts and, and give themselves permission to audit the middle class and lower income families even more. So why would they not be honest and say that this is a new surveillance system to capture your face and know where you're at at all times? Regarding President Biden's Build Back Better stimulus package, uh, Representative Primilla Jayapal announced today that the need to move quickly on this bill is urgent. She said this desperately needed relief cannot be delayed any longer. Ms. Jayapal said she is calling on the Senate to work together to get the bill passed as quickly as possible, even if it means changes to the bill. Representative David Price said Democrats run the risk 
of too many intersecting issues if they don't move on this now. For one, uh, for one incumbent, uh, for one, sorry, uh, incumbents that are running for office again need something to talk about in order to get reelected. They need a legislative victory as they head back to campaign in their own districts. Sorry about that. I tripped on my own uh, writing because it's their words, not mine, right? So basically he's saying that they need something to talk about and they need a victory as they start campaigning for votes. Price also said it wouldn't be hard to get this done quickly if we can get the key people on the same page as the key issues. Now, one Democrat that wished to remain anonymous said, the midterms are coming up. We need to give an unpopular president a big boost and the Senate is too fragile these are uh, real issues that deserve urgency. So I don't know who that was, but that was according to a report on the Hill. Representative Katie Porter said, the time is now because the problems are now. I don't think it's any partic there's any particular date, but the answer is today, tomorrow, the day after, as soon as we can get this done, because it gets more expensive and more difficult, and we risk falling farther behind our competitors if we wait. Now, I like how she said the time is now because the problem is now. However, I can't help but notice how much each of these Democrat leaders talked about getting this done as a way of securing votes and not as a way of helping the people. So that was disappointing, but I did like that she said, we need to move on this now because the problem is now. There are a lot of people struggling right now here in the United States. Podcast host Charlemagne de God, who is very pro Biden and super pro Kamala Harris said, Democrats keep saying democracy is on the line, but I want to know when are they going to start governing as if democracy was on the line? Now, both parties use their agendas to smear the other party while having uh, votes as their primary concern. Just today on the floor, a Democrat listed off all the money they put into the economy and how the voter should vote for them because of how much money they put into the economy. Then a Republican stood up and said, and all your money spending got us into the highest inflation in 40 years situation. So people should remember Republicans didn't vote for this money and that's what created inflation, right? So again, I'm just giving you a taste of what each party is saying. Now I could give you a hundred examples of each party bashing the other to make themselves look good in order to secure votes. Uh, I just wish that they would work together for the good of the people and not just to look good to the people. Speaking of Democrats and votes, many Democrat election specialists say if Biden can't change his perception with the public, they will be forced to move on to a new candidate for 2024 that can unite the party and win. They say they will keep searching, but their emergency go-to person at this point is Michelle Obama. So we could see another Obama White House if Biden or someone else doesn't seem to pull better than Biden and Harris are right now. Speaking of Biden, the New York Times filed a major lawsuit yesterday with the State Department saying that they are covering up the actions and activities of Biden's son, Hunter Biden. The New York Times is requesting to know about Hunter's travels and all his emails they want to better understand Hunter's business dealings with Ukraine and China. Now, the New York Times has been very anti-Trump and very pro-Biden, so this comes as a pretty big twist to have them now investigate the President of the United States' son. Speaking of New York, Black Americans in New York are banding together like never before to sue the city of New York for passing a new bill that allows illegal immigrants to vote in New York elections. These New Yorkers say illegal immigrants voting hurts their legal vote and they won't stand for it. Now, I'm not from New York, but I know non-citizens voting in Utah would not be well received. So hopefully they have some success pushing back on this new legislation. If you think we have it bad here in the States with 7% inflation, the country of Turkey announced they are dealing with 36% inflation. 
and a real risk of their currency collapsing like we saw with Greece and Zimbabwe several years ago. The Fed and the White House need to make inflation a bigger focus uh, or increase uh, their, their focus on getting inflation under control because right now, increasing bills and increasing inflation are pushing massive numbers of American families into poverty, and I hate to see this. Yesterday, the United Kingdom said it will drop its forced vaccine mandates against healthcare workers, just the opposite of the United States. They say at this point, everyone that wants the vaccine has had an opportunity, and the bigger risk now is collapsing the medical system with layoffs. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Make sure to get your name entered to be one of the winners of the giveaway Casey and I are doing. 10 of you are going to win $500 in cash. I'm hoping to increase that with a few more, but I only like to talk about what I already have secured in the bag. So take 20 seconds, follow that link, and go get your name entered. Now, before you go, I just want to remind you that you are amazing, just in case nobody reminds you of that today. Hey, I appreciate you being in my community and I'll see you on the next video.